Geeks and nerds, I'm back. What's the story? Where have I been? We'll talk about that later. What's the plan for today? Well, we're going to find some ice, but we're going to do it using zombies. Long-time viewers might guess what we're doing, but we're building a new custom ice farm based on one I've done before, but this time it's much simpler, much bigger, and more reliable. Why ice, I hear you say? It's all because of our new base location. That's right, it's time to start a new mega base here in these snowy plains. I've selected this location as it has something very special below ground. You guessed it, a stronghold with a portal to the end. This portal will be the centerpiece of a new huge storage system within our new mega base. So this is where we're gonna build our new mega base. This is about 2000 blocks away from our starter area. And over here, we've got plenty of wood. We've got uh, all these, uh, these spruce trees looking very Christmassy. And over here, we've got plenty of ice, loads of icebergs, uh, but I don't wanna destroy the natural terrain. I wanna keep all of this uh, as it is. Uh, we might tidy up a little bit, but uh, pretty much leaving this uh, as it is. So that's why we're gonna build a brand new ice farm over here in this area. And we're gonna need plenty of ice to build our new ice fortress, which is gonna be up here on this hill. First things first, we need to collect eight and a half thousand blocks, so let's get resource gathering. And after some grinding, we've got the items we need in these shulkers behind us. So let's uh, let's check it out. So in here, we've got a bunch of leaves. We've got some ice. We also got some glass and then various bits of uh, redstone uh, that we need to build our custom ice farm just over here. So before we build it, though, let's talk about how ice forms so we can understand how this farm is going to work. So I've got a couple of uh, uh, areas of water here just to demonstrate. As you can see there, we're getting ice forming already. But basically, you need to be in a snowy biome like we are here. And if you've got some water sources, they will start turning to ice. You can also be in a in a in a cold biome and you've got to be high enough for for snowfall and in that case this will work there as well so as you can see here we're getting ice forming in this this water tray now basically what you need is you need to have sky access so this trough over here this water will never freeze because it's blocked uh, by these blocks here so you also need to have water sources uh, obviously and the water sources will turn into ice as long as they're next to a non-water block and that includes uh, water, water dog blocks as well so what happens here is that ice will start forming around the edge here because it's got the solid blocks around the edge and then it'll work its way into the center and you can see yeah, as i'm recording here you'll see uh, that stuff turn into ice now over here we've got another water tray which is uh, water water log blocks all around the outside now this will never freeze as it is now because there's water water log blocks around the outside and there's no there's no uh, there's no non water blocks here for this uh, this to freeze but if we put a block in the center like this we should start seeing uh, the ice around it uh, start forming And there you have it, some ice formed right next to this block. Uh, now that only happened because we've got this, this solid block here. Uh, and then, so this is the way the farm's gonna work. We're gonna wanna have uh, some solid blocks here. So ice can form inside this tray. And then over time, all of this will then fill up with ice. And then eventually, once it's done that, we wanna be able to harvest all of this ice using our sick touch pick. And then of course, the, uh, the water dog blocks around the outside will refill and then if we can get our temporary block inside again then we can start the process again and this is how we're gonna this is how we're gonna harvest our ice so we are going to be using some mobs in this we're going to be using some zombies and also some villagers as well actually and yeah this is going to make it a bit more interesting and a bit more unique As I was building this farm up, I had a bit of a moment where something happened that I didn't expect. So you can see here, I'm going around the outside of all of these stairs, filling them with water to make them waterlogged. And so that means that this whole tray will fill with water and no ice will form because we've got water everywhere. But then you can see some did. We got a couple of blocks of ice and I was like, what's going on here? And it's because some ice formed next to the stairs before they were waterlogged. I've made some good progress. So let me show you what we've got so far. And as we fly in, you can see that this water tray is actually pretty big. This is gonna give us 
quite a lot of ice actually so uh, as you can see we've got this big water train as we already said uh, this is not going to freeze none of this here is going to freeze at the moment we'll talk about what we're going to change later on uh, i've got some leaves around the outside that will become apparent what that's all about shortly and if i can if i can actually take off there we go uh, underneath i've also added uh, a bunch of these leaves so what are these for well this is going to be for mining we're going to be standing on these leaves we're going to be looking up we're going to be mining down all the ice because we're going to have some fly machines that run across and push down the ice so we can reach it from here and we can mine it all up there's another row here so basically we're going to be standing on this row uh, to mine upwards and where those uh, leaves are that's the second row we can mine uh, safely all of the ice and uh, why are we using leaves well they're non-spawnable so i can walk around here not having to worry about uh, monsters uh, spawning and also as i'm going around with my pick and breaking all the ice instantly uh, these are less likely to break obviously they will break eventually but uh, should be easier to uh, to keep these blocks uh, not not breaking by accident so that's the reason for that so yeah made a good start still got quite a bit to go but as you can see this is the size of the farm and this is going to be yeah very cool so the next thing we need to do is we need to get ourselves i think some villagers are the next thing we should get so i'm not sure if there's any villages nearby but i think we need to explore see what we can find and here is a village it's about 800 blocks to the east of our farm so we've got to somehow get villagers back uh, back over there so here we have a few it's like it's uh, town meeting time <laughs> so which two are going to be our lucky villagers to take over to the farm, I wonder? I think this is the first guy we're going to try and get over to our farm. Uh, I think I'm just going to try and get two because uh, I do need more than that, but we can breed them up uh, over at the farm. And I think we're going to try and use a boat. Uh, I was considering using the nether, but it's a bit inhospitable. So let's, uh, yeah, let's try and get him in a boat. Go, get, go ahead, get in a boat. Let's go. Push it. There we go. Push him in the boat. Yes, he's in. All right. So let's see if we can get him over there. So, yes, about 800 blocks that way. Let's see how easy or hard this might be. OK, we're speeding over the ice, but it's all about dodging the terrain. So I think we can probably find a way through. It's mostly ice and water. We've got a little bit of a landmass here, but uh, once we get through this bit, it should be plain sailing. We're almost there there's our portal near the farm so yeah just got to get this guy over here and this hasn't been this hasn't been too bad actually uh where's he gone yo hello where did he go time to relog oh there he is <laughs> he's over there how how did he get over there all right no problem let's uh, grab our boat and yeah boat him over to his new home We've got our first guy over, so let's break this boat. And what I've done is I've uh, I've put a little I put a, a workstation up here with a little bit of a, a fence around, so he can't uh, he can't run away. So he should be safe in here. No mobs can spawn around there, so he's good. So now we need to go back to the village that way and get another one and get these breeding. Okay, that wasn't too bad. Got the other one over without too many problems. Yeah, it was pretty easy. So uh, yeah, got them in the pen here, taken away the workstations and put down uh, these beds. So we need ten villages in total. So I've got ten beds down here. Hopefully that's enough. We'll see how it goes. But now I'm going to give these guys uh, some bread and hopefully we should see some babies pop out. So I can work on the rest of the farm as these are breeding. I've got some more food so I can give them plenty of food uh, along the way. Yeah, and then we uh, yeah keep going until we've got all the villagers that we need. And there's our first baby jumping around on the bed as kids do. <laughs> all right. OK, let's get moving, shall we? After a little bit of AFK, all our babies are grown up into fine young adults. Look at these all sound asleep with the eyes open but anyway they're all in bed and we've got 10 of them so we're all good now so the next thing we've got uh yeah so i made a little bit of a mistake i think i should have got them up there because we need all of our villagers up here we actually need each we need one on each of these uh soul, uh, soul sand blocks over there we've got five on this side five on the other side so i should have put them up there but uh, we can get them up from here up to there in a little bit but before we do that i need to get my hands on a particular book that i don't have yet so i'm going to sleep here uh, get these guys up and then see if we can trade with them so let's pop this workstation down here see which one takes it that's that guy right let's see what he's got does he have the one we want no that is not the book now i'm sure some of you can guess the book we're after put your comments there put your your guesses in the comments and i'll tell you in a second let's see does this guy have it no we need to break it again so we've got to go through this now i thought about putting these guys into a into a cell but yeah, it's not so easy when they're all in this uh they're all like this in a big pen so i'm gonna have to just put this down block break it see who picks it up it's not always the same villager no okay so the book we're after is frostwalker yeah we're after a frostwalker book in fact we need 10 frostwalker books 
Uh, that's not for the villagers. No, no. The villagers are going to be in some little pods on some soul sand. We'll talk about that a bit later on. Uh, but yeah, got to do this uh, this cycling until we get Frostwalker. We finally got there after many, many breaking of the lectern. We finally got there, got the tray we needed. There's our boy Noodle, did us proud. So we've got uh, the Frostwalker one book that we needed and we got got a few of them actually. So let's get it on, uh, get it on some of these boots. So we need to have five of these is what we need. So we'll do all this right now. Now these boots are gonna be very useful. They are gonna be for our zombies. So we need to capture some zombies later on and yeah, equip them with these boots. And we've also got something else for them to wear somewhere in here. Oh yeah, five of these, that's gonna be fun. I think the next job is going to be to get our villagers up into uh, up into place. So I'm going to make uh, a few of these little containment uh, these containment pods to put them in. Uh, I've already done a couple just over there. So yeah, I've got to do a few of these. And this is where our villagers are actually going to end up. They're going to they're going to stay in here. So uh, yeah, and it's pretty straightforward. Just got to build this, and we'll get a glow like in just there. Uh, the reason for that will become apparent shortly. But yeah, just got to do this for uh, all five on this side and five on that side. Then we can try and get our villagers up here. Okay, we are ready for the villagers up there. We've got all five on that side and all five on the other side. Not that you can see them, but they're they're there ready to go. And I've just built this temporary little uh, little tube up here that we're going to get our villagers up. So I think what I'm going to try is trying to push one of these guys in here. Now, this is not going to always be easy. I might have to use a workstation to lure him in, but I can just push this guy in here and then you stay there. All right, we'll shut that up. Very good. Now, if we go up to the top, hopefully we can just go to this corner Break the ice that's underneath, and because we've got water here, it should just flow down, and then he should he should come up and hopefully won't drown. Here he comes. Yeah, it's working. He's coming up. Let's hopefully he'll come up quick enough and won't stop along the way. Yeah, he's keep he's coming, he's coming. Don't take any damage, buddy. Let's go. Come on. Up you come. Up you come. Yes, he's good. He's safe. Very good, very good. And now I should have a boat on me. Yes. And we'll get him in here. Very good. Now we can boat him over to uh to his location and try and get him in if i can get out of this boat ah we'll push him into place let's go there you go buddy in you go no no don't come out no and he's in <laughs> i think i just got to just going to get rid of this one there we go and that is all good all right very cool With that, all our villagers are in place, ready to go. We've got five on this side. And if I scoot around this side, we've got five along here as well, ready to go. All right, and I've also cleaned up underneath. So that is all back to back to how it should be. So I think the next thing to do is to finish up the build. Let's uh, finish up this farm. And as I do, let me tell you where I've been for the last 11 months. If you're following me on Twitter, you may have an idea of what's happened, but let me tell you all about it. I do need to be a bit careful here as What's happened has affected my whole family and as many of you know I have three children and I need to protect them. At the same time though I do want to tell you what's gone on and explain why I haven't been uploading videos. Last year my wife at the time and I separated after 25 years together. This wasn't something I expected or saw coming. I discovered a third party was involved and so I started divorce proceedings and we separated. As you can imagine this hit pretty hard not only for me but for my children too. I spent the last 10 months or so trying to navigate all the legal and financial implications while making sure my children are put first and the outcome is as best as it can be for them. Fast forward to today and the divorce is complete. It's been very expensive for me, but I'm in a good place now. I've stayed in a family home and I live with my three children full time. I started dating again. I tried some of the dating apps and now have a wonderful girlfriend that the kids really like and everyone seems much happier now. It's important to always stay as positive as you can when things happen, and that's what I've tried to do. It did take a lot out of me, and so I had to pause on making videos to focus on my family. So, what's next for the channel? 
I'd like to get back to producing videos again on a regular basis, but I'm still organizing my schedule. Now that I'm a lone parent, I have more things to do to keep the house running and look after my children. For the time being, I'm not gonna force myself into a fixed schedule. It'd be more relaxed than that with videos coming when they're ready. I am considering a new series though to try and gain back a few viewers. Uh, when you have a, a break from YouTube for a long time, uh, you do lose people unfortunately, but that's okay. More on that in the future. So there you have it. Hopefully I'm back for good. Always stay positive. With that, the farm is pretty much done. It's all completely built. We just need to get ourselves a few zombies. Now I'm going to uh, I'm going to explain how this all works in a little bit and give you a demo. But we do need the zombies, uh, yeah, before we can do that. So what I've done here is I've uh, added this little platform here. Hopefully it's enough to spawn a few mobs. Uh, I'm going to go up to the top of that uh, that tower there, which is far enough away so mobs can spawn here. And yeah, once we get a few zombies, we'll try and trap them. And hopefully this goes all right. But you know how it is with mobs in Minecraft. This could be this could be could be bad. It's night time and there are a few zombies down there so let's uh, let's go down and see uh see what's what so i've got these uh got these squid heads here and what i want to do is to give them to these zombies so they don't despawn because we need zombies that will uh, pick up items but we don't want uh, the creepers to blow up no 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 <laughs> right can we do this is this going to be uh oh it's at the end of an after us well run 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 we should be safe in the water though so let's uh let's try and give some of these uh is that creeper gonna see us you might see us. Let's see. Can we we throw? Can we throw this head in here? No. Ooh, don't block. No, no, no. Dang it. Okay. Can these any of these zombies pick up a skull? Let's pick it up. Uh oh, I need to grab these. <laughs> I want these back. Oh, and more creepers. Whoa. This is a bad idea. This is a bad idea. Okay, better idea. Let's take out the creepers so we don't get uh, we don't get blown up. Whoa. Oh. But we'll do we'll stay in the water so we don't we don't have endermen after us either so let's get rid of all these creepers okay no more creepers let's see are any of these zombies any good let's try again can any of these guys pick up a skull oh yeah good we've got one excellent excellent and let's try another one no <laughs> does that go oh no we don't want you to hold in it no <laughs> no that's no good right let's take out this enderman because he's giving me giving me hassles in the meantime, let's get this guy in a boat just so he doesn't uh, doesn't go away anywhere. Okay, good. So he is now stationary. I think what I might do, I might try and give him a weapon and see if he exchanges it for that uh, that skull. I think I'd rather keep that. The sun's coming up, but this zombie won't burn because he's got uh, an item on his head. But let's give him this shovel and see if we'll exchange that for the skull. Oh, it's, <laughs> it's going all over the place. Let's try it again. How about now? Oh, yeah, he did. Excellent. Okay, great. We've got the skull back. Right. Let's get rid of this and we'll have to wait until uh, the next night to see if we can get some more zombies. Some more mobs have spawned. Let's get down here. Hopefully we'll have a bit more success this time. Hopefully a bit more smoother. Let's uh, come over here. Okay, fair enough. Right, let's 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 take out that uh, let's take out things that aren't zombies basically. So first of all, you you get out of here. Oh dang it, creepers! Right, let's jump up here. Oh, look at this hole. <laughs> okay, let's uh, let's run around here. You pick them up, should do. He's got, a, yep, there we go. He had, a, he had a bone in his hand, so that's good. What about this guy? Also, he's got uh, some, some gunpowder there. So let's see, let's see if he does the same. Very good. Okay, two more. And while we're waiting for nightfall, I thought it'd be a good idea to get these zombies into a better position. So we need to just uh, maneuver them in front of our uh, in front of our villagers there, and just going to box them in uh, so they're nice and safe. We'll deal with them uh, in a little bit. We're going to have we're obviously going to break the boats and uh, yeah, let them see the villagers properly. But yeah, just to go through for each of these three. Uh, this one had a little bit of trouble with because he was in the way, but yeah, just just got to box him in and then do the same for the last one. And then we just need to wait for the next night time, get two more zombies, and then we should be good to run the farm. The next night comes around and I'm doing, doing the usual, clearing off the platform and then these two baby zombies uh, catch me by surprise so I take them out but then I hear a, a strange noise. That's right, it's, uh, it's, an, it's a villager being attacked and I don't know what's going on, I look around and then I'm too late and I discover one of our villagers has been converted by that baby zombie in there but uh, you know, I'll get revenge and take him out. 
So yes, some good news and some bad news. Bad news is one of our villagers has been converted to a zombie, which is no good. Uh, but we do have all five of the zombies we needed with uh, with all the squid heads uh, on them, so they're all ready to go. So I think what I'm going to do now is uh, is cure this uh, cure this villager up. I uh, I went back to base and uh, grabbed grabbed uh, the necessary uh, bits and pieces. So let's go over here and give him a splash of weakness. So I think I can just throw this uh, in here. And then we need to give him an apple. So let's do that and then fly out of here before this zombie kills me. The last thing to do now is to free our zombies and give them our frost walker boots uh, that we made earlier on. So uh, I'm not sure exactly how the best way to do this, but I think I'm going to just break the boat and then I'm going to get this guy to come up into this space just here. So he's going to just track, track behind me. Now I want to I'm going to box him in with some leaves and now I think I can just throw the boots uh, in here and he should put them on hopefully. Yep they're on. Yep very good. So now we can get rid of all these other leaves and just leave this one here and when the flying machine flies across it will break this leaf and yeah get rid of that. So I think we've just got to do this for all of these zombies now and yeah then we're ready to run this farm and I'll show you how it works. We're ready to turn the farm on, but before we do, let me give you a quick tour and explain what's going to happen when we do. So first of all, let's talk about uh, these towers. So you see me build these up and I think you've probably got an idea of what, what's going to happen. But let me quickly talk you through it. So we've got 10 of these towers, five on each side, and they're both they're all exactly the same. So effectively, we have a villager in each of these towers. On this side, we have our villagers right at the very top because we have water uh, all the way going up. And you see there's alternate water, water sources. Uh, that's that's because we've got dispensers behind with water buckets in. So on this side, all the water's been dispensed and all the villagers are now at the top. And on the other side, it's the opposite. The water is still inside buckets, inside dispensers. And the villagers are at the bottom with the zombies uh, uh, tracking them. You see they're nodding their heads <laughs> in unison. So that's the same on that side over there. So what's going to happen here is that the, when the flying machine gets triggered, we'll talk about that in a minute, the flying machine obviously flies this way in that direction and docks at the other end. And when it does so, we have observers on both sides. We've got one here pointing into this way. So as it goes past, as it goes past this block here, it's going to power that block, which powers this redstone, which this observer notices and then sets up a chain reaction all the way to the very top, uh, activating all of the dispensers. And so if the water's out, it gets sucked in and uh, vice versa. So what's effectively going to happen is as the fly machine goes across for each each pair of towers, it will uh, it will shoot the, the villager from there up to the very top. And then this one will get dropped down. And then the zombie that's over there will lose track of that villager because he's too far away. He has to go that far up. And then he's going to then notice this villager because he's going to then be in range. And he's going to walk all the way across here to this side, get in this little hole here. And he's going to leave a trail of frosted ice behind him if I can uh, not fall off. So when he does that, you're going to have a trail of frosted ice going across here. And of course, we'll have that for each of these, uh, these are these five, these five lanes. And then what's going to happen is uh, because we've got some, some frosted ice here, that's just temporary. We'll get some ice forming next to all of the frosted ice. The frosted ice then will melt when it's, uh, when it's daytime, leaving a few, a few, uh, a few blocks of ice here and there around this water trough. And then that allows the ice to spread over the whole, over the whole, uh, the, the whole, the whole water trough here. Then what's going to happen is uh, when it gets to around dawn, the flying machine flies across again and it's going to push down any ice that's formed. And then the whole sit the whole, the whole thing is going to happen all over again. Below me is the on off switch. So currently it's off, which is powering this line, which means that this, uh, this, uh, this piston over here is uh, fully powered. And so nothing's going to happen. We'll talk about this in a second. Now over this side, we've got a counter because we want this, uh, we want this fly machine to go across only 11 times. That's because the pistons underneath, they have a push limit of 12 and we already have uh, a layer of ice underneath there. If it goes any more than that, what's going to happen is the farm will effectively break because not all of the ice will get pushed down and the water won't refill and we'll basically get, uh, yeah, we'll have to mine out this, uh, this this area manually. So we have a counter to count to 11. So here in this dropper, we have 11 items. As the fly machine goes across, this is the observer that triggers uh, all of the towers. It's also going to trigger this this dispense, this uh, this dropper, sorry. And so each of the items will get pushed over into this, into this hopper one by one. When this is then empty, it's going to uh, depower this, this comparator, which depowers this block. We've got a redstone torch underneath. And so when it's empty, uh, this will get powered, which effectively powers the, the on off line, uh, turning the farm off. And then over on the other side here, we have we have a button just down there. That's the reset button. And that's going to power this little circuit here, which pushes this redstone block away, allowing the counter to reset back to back to back to its beginning state. So once we've uh, mined up all the ice underneath, 
we can reset it and set the farm off again for another cycle. The last thing to mention is this Dawn Detector that I come up with. So here we have our on-off line going in here and powering this piston. So this piston is always powered currently. When it's not powered by the on-off line, it then will get powered uh, uh, by this little uh, Dawn Detector. So basically you have this, uh, this the daylight sensor in night mode and we have a comparator coming off of it. Here we have this lectern with a book with 15 pages in it. And this is on page 11. So we get a signal strength of 11 out of here. We get compared here and so basically at, at dawn uh, this piston will will, uh, will will drop and we'll get a signal and that will set off the uh, the flying machine so that's how this works and we've got exactly the same setup uh, on the other side uh, so this 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 uh, flying machine will go across at dawn wait at the other side when it's dawn again it will come across this way and that gives uh, the ice enough time to pretty much form an entire sheet over here ready for harvest i think that's enough talking about the farm let's turn it on and see it work and as the farm runs, let's uh, talk about some details. You can see here the fly machine going across, pushing down all the blocks. Now there's no ice to push down, of course, because this is the first run. But you can see uh, on the right hand side, the villagers are uh, uh, be swimming up uh, to the top, getting out of uh, out, out of aggro range of the, of the zombies. And on the left hand side, the villagers fall down. And then at some point, the villagers on the right are too far away and the, the, the zombies uh, retarget onto the villagers on the left and start walking across, creating this path of frosted ice. And then you'll see that now and again, we get uh, some ice blocks forming next to the next to the frosted ice. The frosted ice is the temporary blocks we talked about earlier. And then once we've got a couple of a couple of ice blocks, these are seed blocks. That's enough for ice to start spreading uh, throughout the rest of the farm. Now, as I started the farm uh, during daylight, uh, the frosted ice doesn't last that long, and so we get fewer fewer seed blocks. But uh, when the farm runs automatically at dawn, uh, we get much more, and the farm is much more efficient. Now for this style of farm, why did I pick zombies and villagers? Well, it's due to the, the tracking range. So in the old version of the farm, we used turtle eggs. They only have a tracking range of 24 blocks, but zombies uh, to villagers have a range of 35. That does increase with local difficulty, but uh, this farm is designed around the 35 block range. I was considering using villagers with uh, workstations because they have a longer tracking range of 48 blocks, but it's pretty unreliable with the villager schedules. So this was a much more reliable way and a fun way to get this farm to work. And here we have some sped up footage of the ice forming just from a few sea blocks here and there. You can see just from those couple of blocks, uh, the whole ice sheet uh, gets pretty much uh, filled up. Uh, only a couple of uh, water blocks are left behind. Yeah, this is pretty cool. A couple of interesting things about the flying machine is that we have the lights on board and that is to stop ice forming behind the flying machine as it goes because that can stop the water reforming uh, all the way across. Uh, also, uh, this flying machine is weatherproof. That means that there's no observers uh, with blocks next to them where, where snow layers can form or, or form on top of them because that, that can break the farm if, uh, if observers notice that. The other thing here is that uh, notice that we've got these, uh, these mob heads on top of the, the, the zombies. That's to protect them from the sun because these mob heads won't, uh, won't, won't degrade. They don't have durability so they won't burn in the sun. Uh, you could also do this with, with uh, calf pumpkins that also does the same job. You may be wondering why we're not using bubble columns here for the villagers. That would actually be better because if the villagers get out of range quicker, the zombies move across quicker and so we have more frosted ice for longer. Uh, but uh, that doesn't turn out to be too much of a problem for this farm. And also the reason for it really is because of resources. I'm in survival and I don't have the resources for the double number of uh, observers and, uh, and, and dispensers that would require. At the top of these towers, we also have some lightning rods to protect the villagers. We don't want them turning into witches. This version of the farm is much better. Uh, we have 19,000 blocks per each layer of ice. Uh, on the previous design, it was only 5,500 blocks. It's much simpler with much less redstone, no complicated logic to worry about. And it's more reliable. As long as you keep out of the vision range of the, of the zombies and you don't unload the flying machines as they're going, you should be good. I've left the farm running for a bit and you can see now that underneath we have a big cube of ice ready to ready to be harvested so we just need to fly into here get our silk touch pick out and then yeah just harvest this stuff away so obviously at the moment uh, there's not a great collection system now we do have a couple of layers still to go so ideally uh, all of these blocks will be filled in so it's just a case of walking around here and listen to this very satisfying sound of ice breaking so what i might do uh, i might get some alays over here to help me with the collection of all the ice but essentially we just do this and then once we've got a layer here to walk on we can look all the way up 
just harvest and then just walk forward. And that's basically the method for harvesting all the ice in a safe way. You always need to have a layer of ice underneath the water, otherwise water falls down. But yeah, and that's basically basically a case of just yeah harvesting this stuff and collecting it all. So yeah, I think some allays in the future will be good. Maybe some water streams to make this easier. Uh, so uh, all the ice goes into chests. But yeah, there we go. That is the farm. Now, one thing I need to be careful of is to not fly above it, because if I fly above it, the zombies will see me, they'll track me. And yeah, it will mean I'll have to get them back uh, in, in the right pods next to the villages. So we need to uh, be careful of that. If you enjoyed the episode or the headbanging zombies behind us, then don't forget to hit the subscribe button, hit the like button. You know what to do. Any questions or whatnot, get it in the comments below. And yeah, that'll be pretty cool. So until next time, I will see you later.